This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You need to get ready for a job interview. So you study common questions and you practice your answers. That's a good start, says today's guest, but you also need to prepare for the questions not on your list. Ryan Yip is here to talk about how to answer any interview question. He's an executive coach who helps you find your best career fit, create your personal brand, and organize your job search. Ryan joins us from the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, let's get started, Ryan. How do most candidates prepare for interview questions? You know, if you Google search uh, interview preparation, you'll find basically two approaches uh, to interview uh, uh, preparation. And that one of them, and they're both important. Um, One is, 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 uh, you know, have your accomplishment stories ready. Uh, uh, Usually it's it's, uh, what you did, the project, the situation, the problem, um, and uh, what you did, the actions you took, and then uh, what you accomplished, the results, hopefully quantitated. And that's very important to have in preparation for an interview uh, so that you can bring up your accomplishments when you're asked a question and ask for an example. Uh, The other approach would be uh, a list of sample questions that you might be asked, maybe 30, 40, 50 uh, within certain categories. And that is also important to see, you know, the types of uh, questions you might be asked. Um, My uh, approach to it, it kind of consolidates both of those and has a little bit different element. And it's not something that people don't think about, but maybe a little more systematic in their approach. Um, And that is to have uh, a systematic and, um, you know, uh, organized uh, categories for each of the questions that you might be asked. So in other words, um, you know, there's there's different uh, things that you might be asked uh, during an interview. Um, and so what would be the concern that an interview might have when bringing on a new team? All right. Well, before we dig into that, Ryan, so the, the two approaches that you just described, um, there's an acronym for the first one. It's called STAR, Situation, Task, Action, Result. And as you say, it's it's very popular and, and, and effective. And, and the second... Uh, approach you described is getting ready for what are called behavioral interview questions, uh, where a manager wants to ask you for examples of how you've tackled problems that uh, that company or employer is probably currently facing. Why aren't those two approaches alone enough? Why do you need to do more than that, Ryan? Well, they 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 are great uh, uh, for preparation. However, people get, I would say, overwhelmed. If you if you give them 30, 40, 50 questions and they think about, oh, I have to answer all of the, have pre- prepared answers for all of these questions and then all the variations of these questions, people can get rather intimidated and maybe overwhelmed and go into an interview uh, quite nervous and um, apprehensive. So um, what I like to do is have them prepare, especially for uh, behavioral questions, um, with uh, some philosophical uh, uh, statements about each of the categories they might be asked, um, and so I would say, put yourself in the in the place of the inter- in the shoes of the interviewer. What would this interviewer be concerned about if they were bringing on uh, a new a member of their team? Some of the obvious ones are: um, Does this person work hard? Does this person get along with others? Um, uh, how does this person handle conflict? How does this person like to manage if, if it's a management position? Or how does this person like to be managed if it's an indiv- individual contributor uh, uh, role? So uh, what I do is I c- categorize each of the quest, all of the questions into di- these different areas of concern. And then what I do is develop a philosophical statement for each of the categories. And why is 
that important. And I think I think it's important for example, if you go into an interview and someone asks you, uh, tell me a time when um, you had a conflict with a with a, another team member. How did you resolve that? It's a very common question you might be asked in an interview. And, and a great example of a behavioral interview question, too, which often begins with that phrase, tell me about a time or give me an example or uh, talk about your experience in doing, you know, fill in the blank. Exactly. Very often you'll have a preparation or, uh, for that question, an, an accomplishment or a case study that you can give right away. But let's say uh, it's a little, the interviewer wants to put you under a little stress, maybe puts a, a little bit of a spin on it. And let's say you blank out or you hesitate. Um, you, don't, you can't think of your accomplishment statement right away, this star that you've used the star method for, the SOAR method or success story. Um, let's say you, you just kind of blank out and it's, it's quite common. For, so instead of hesitating, um, what I would recommend is having your philosophical statement ready for this particular category. Actually, this is kind of two categories uh, in combination. One is, can I get along with others? And the other one is, how do I handle conflict? So, for example, uh, let's say you blank out in, on this question. Then I would, you would go to your philosophical statement, and it could be like, uh, well, um, I believe I can get along with anyone as long as we both be, uh, behave within the bounds of professional demeanor. I might not be their best friend, uh, but I really believe I can get along with anyone as long as we both behave professionally. So this is your philosophical statement for can I get along with others? Um, and while you're saying this prepared statement, you're kind of buying yourself time to think about a case study, an accomplishment that you can say, uh, that you can state after uh, you've, you've said this philosophical statements. And you can say, for example, uh, when I was uh, doing this project and we had a conflict and so forth. Um, and if, even if, so if maybe if you don't have an exact example, uh, you can say, well, yeah, I don't haven't, you know, encountered that particular case, but here's another example of how I uh, got along with others uh, in, in, a, in a project uh, uh, situation and team situation. So it, it, it would help you. Well, two quick follow-up questions, Ryan. I mean, one is how do you determine what categories you should create philosophical statements for? Yeah, well, again, you know, put yourself in the shoes of the interviewer. Um, so you, they're very, I think, common these these questions uh, or these categories that you would you would um, uh, think about in your head, and, and you can actually develop them from the questions. Let's say you do have a list of questions that you've been given as examples of what. Uh, interviews might ask. They're usually categorized into different behavioral, um, uh, uh, you know, you know, ways to 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 behave in particular situations uh, that would come up, um, and and that an interview might be concerned about. And and it's not. I think this is also uh, can be relevant for non-behavioral questions. So when you're sitting down with a client, uh, they've got an interview coming up in a week or two, and they want to identify the categories that they should be prepared to address in the, in the case of, um, uh, uh, how, do, how do you help them do that? Do they look at a job description? What, what steps do you take them through to help them identify those categories so they can prepare those philosophical statements? Yeah, often, oftentimes, um, actually, if their first contact is is the HR person or the recruiter, the recruiter will somewhat prep them on what um, the interviewers might be concerned about or might be asking in an interview. So you can kind of get clues from what the HR person uh, might uh uh, tell you in terms of, of preparation for the interviews coming up. Um, and again, as, and you're right, um, the uh, job description uh, is another way that you can get clues about what they're um, uh, concerned about or what they're looking for in, in a candidate, um, whether it's, um, you know, some of the soft skills, uh, like, um, you know, uh, how to manage people, how to uh, how to uh, get along with people, um, any conceptual type of issues or or technical. Um, of course, they're going to have technical um, and and job specific requirements that you want to show your cal uh, qualifications for. So you're going to have your accomplishment, your star stories ready for those requirements, um, and 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 then 
I would say still develop your philosophical statements. In other words, if they ask, you know, how would you manage this project, specific project, I would still prepare uh, a statement that says, well, I approach, in general, I approach projects this way. I like to be uh, very transparent in the way that I set our goals up for a project, let's say. Um, I like to, uh, you know, de develop the the consequences, both good and bad, of our actions as we move through the project, and then have a process by which we handle any conflict that comes up. So you can have a general philosophical statement about a, even a technical issue about a project or how you would handle um, a problem, like, you know, even a technical whiteboarding problem, uh, develop a kind of philosophy about how you develop or vision about how you, how you solve a problem. Um, and that will help, I think, uh, give people, uh, your interviewer, kind of an overview and, your, and the way that you think, your critical thinking, your logical uh, analysis of how you approach uh, different issues and problems that come up in the workplace. So I think it's, it's, it's really important. Well, we're going to pause and take a break, Ryan. When we come back, I want to talk more about philosophical statements, particularly uh, if you have a recommended formula or a set of elements that you always uh, suggest that people include. So stay with us. When we return, uh, Ryan Yip will continue to share his advice on how to answer any interview question. An employer's questions about your application start with your resume. Find out how well your resume addresses what matters to hiring managers. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Top resume will give you free detailed feedback about your resume. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You'll find out what works and doesn't work in your resume so you can fix it yourself. Or you can hire top resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Ryan Yip. He's an executive coach who helps you find your best career fit, create your personal brand, and organize your job search. And Ryan joins us from the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, Ryan, before the, the break, we were talking about how to answer any interview question. And you recommended two um, well-known methods, the STAR uh, method for talking about accomplishments, uh, and, and then behavioral preparing for behavioral interview questions. And then you also have outlined for us uh, an approach that um, involves creating philosophical statements and uh, that give you a chance to talk about your general approach and as well as uh, um, and and do other things as well. And I, I just, before we paused, we were talking about, you gave an example, a great example of a philosophical statement. Do you have a formula for building this? If somebody is at home thinking, well, how do I do this? What are the most important pieces I need to include? What would you say to them? Yeah, you know, it's it's very interesting. You know, I've been asked that before, and uh, people have even asked me, oh, can you write my philosophical statements for me, or, you know, and things like that, or, and, uh, and, and, you know, people are, are you know, very uh, conscientious uh, when they th see these questions, uh, a list of questions, they, they actually try to write the answers uh, down, you know, very conscientiously and try to uh, formulate the answers. But sometimes it comes off as too rote and stiff. Um, basically, I would say, if you're unsure about how to answer these behavioral questions like uh, how do you handle conflict? How do you get along with others? How do you like to be managed or, or how do you like to manage? You know, I would say you really have to go back to educate yourself about best practices in, in whether it's people management or conflict resolution, um, th those types of um, uh philosophies, let's say, or concepts um, can be learned. Um, and it's not for me to, it, it, it's not like a formula that you would kind of just 
uh, conjure up out of thin air. It really has to be authentic to your experience. Um, and, and, and many, um, many people, my clients are quite experienced. They've had five, 10, uh, or more years of experience in the workplace. So they generally, maybe they haven't formulated these, these philosophical statements, but they know kind of intuitively how they handle different situations. So it's just a matter of, of, of crystallizing their thoughts uh, and writing them down and kind of thinking about, in general, how they approach different problems, different issues. Uh, if you're younger, let's say, and you maybe haven't thought about these particular types of questions, uh, then I would, I, I, what I've done is refer them to uh, different uh, websites, let's say, or inf information and articles about uh, these different issues. Um, and it has to resonate with you um, and over the years, um, you know, let's say the, the example about how do you handle conflict? Um, so, you know, you can, there are many books about negotiating and handling and, and conflict resolution. So one of the methods could be, um, you know, you put yourself in the shoes of the other person because you want to get their perspective, even though you might not agree with that perspective, you want to know what it is and why they are, are, are having that approach to a particular problem. And then you take the 30,000 mile view of it, objectively look, look down on it, both of your, um, your opinions about a particular issue. And that is the first way to, to begin negotiating a resolution, a solution. Now, now, you know, that comes from, in my case, it comes from reading books, about conflict resolution, about negotiation, and so forth, and, and finding what's authentic to you, what works for you. So it's not for me to say, you know, what exactly you should say. It's, it's how, how you would educate yourself about it. All right. So you, you do the research, you draw on your uh, previous professional experience, and you form an opinion, which is your approach. As you do this work uh, with your clients, Ryan, do you recommend that they write down uh, what their their uh, the philosophical statement and practice it before an interview. Well, the, the important part is actually practice. So, um, you know, writing it down is absolutely you know what you want to do. Uh, taking notes exactly, uh, doing that. But the more important thing, especially for an interview, is to practice. And and whether you uh, take your recording device, your your phone. Um, some or the computer to record yourself on video. Uh, for me, it helps quite a bit and for my clients to, you need to say it out loud. You need to either record it or say it out loud and practice it because um, you can write it down. It sounds great when, you, when it's written, but as you formulate the words in your mouth, it might not be so easy to, it might not flow the way you'd like it when you're in an interview. So very, very important to say these words um, and, and, these, and these paragraphs and statements that you want to make, practice them until they're very natural to you and change the words so they fit your, <laughs> the, the words fit your mouth easily to say. Uh, and because some words for me are, you know, are, are not easy to, to vocalize. So you have to find ones that are comfortable for you. So you, you write it out. You hit the record button, whether it's audio or video. Then you listen or watch uh, the recording. What do you recommend to your clients that they look for as they um, listen to themselves or watch themselves? And and what sorts of things should they look for to change? Well, yeah, I mean, I think they're the common ones where you don't want to say um, – and this is some of my own uh, things that I look for. You don't want to, you don't want to have these you knows or these uh, vocal ticks and th so forth. You want to find, sound very um, smooth when you when you when you uh, give your answers. I think the more you know, important thing is to sound confident. I think you know I, I mentioned this previously when we talked uh, prior to this uh, podcast that um, you want to sound comfortable and confident. Um, and, and the way that I would say you would want to do that is to go into uh, an interview uh, with a uh, be of service attitude. Um, so what I mean by that is that 
you want to be confident in that you've done the work that uh, that they, they they require, or at least you you've done some of it. And if if, if you don't know exactly, uh, you know you don't have experience exactly of, of what uh, they want to, you to do, uh, then you can learn it quickly. Uh, you you can come up to speed quite quickly. So I I would I recommend that you go in very confident, confidently uh, and say, and you're offering your services, trying to find, find a good connection between you and the interviewer. And the interviewer might want to judge you, uh, but that shouldn't affect your self-esteem or, or your confidence. Uh, it's just not a good fit if, if, if they, you know, if, if for some reason uh, their, qual- uh, their, their requirements don't fit your qualifications. I, I know there are other external uh, factors that come in if you've been looking for a, a job a long time and there's financial considerations and so forth. But I would say try to go into an interview uh, just to be of service and offering your services and, and just seeing if you can find that connection. So that's really, really important. I think that helps relax uh, you during an interviewer and will help uh, whatever philosophical statements or answers or accomplishments that you um, uh, will give during an interview it will help uh, to make it sound you want to sound relaxed. You want to sound relaxed and confident. That's really, really important. After you share that philosophical statement, and it's given you time to think about what you might, other points you might make, then do you, what do you do next? Ryan, do you talk about accomplishments? You do talk about accomplishments, but again, uh, when I've um, talked to my clients, many times they'll be very conscientious and, and, and write out their, their accomplishment stories, but it will sound very monotone. Uh, because of their reading off, off like a script. Um, and so again, you want to practice uh, recording yourself. And, and there's a certain structure that I recommend also, and, and that is to uh, present each of your accomplishments as, as a story. Everybody's seen movies, read books, and so forth. Um, and so if you can structure it, structure it like a story, in other words, you're the main character, you know who the audience is, the audience is the interviewer, um, there's always a character arc. So in other words, you start, you know, a little bit of background, and then you're building up, you know, you're going through, you know, what you did, uh, the actions you took. Um, and then there's a punchline or, you know, a, 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 a uh, yeah, you would call it a climax, let's say you're going up. And, and, and so you want to really engage engage the interviewer in your story and that means not taking too long to 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 explain the story and make it you know make it interesting that's the main thing and then you have your punchline these are the actions you took these are the results you got you know uh, whether it's productivity efficiency percentages a customer served um, you know some kind of monetary uh, and it's and I know it's difficult if you're not in, sa- in sales to have a put a, a dollar amount on, on the impact you've had in a company but in in, in the way that you can you want to try to quantitate it uh, uh, your accomplishments just because you know we hear so much about um, uh, adjectives about your skills. This is what I've done. This is what I can do, and so forth. But what really proves what you've done? Uh, what you? What the skills that you have? It's the accomplishments that you've you've uh, achieved, and 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 the impact it's had on on the company, so or your team, and so forth. It's it's been a, a great conversation, Ryan. Now, uh, tell us what's coming up next for you. Yeah. So. So I'm finding more and more I'm doing executive coaching and, and, and how it relates to um, uh, people that are, are, are applying for jobs and, and seeking more different roles is that uh, especially people of color, they've gone through uh, their, their jobs and, and, and up the, their career development and to become technical leaders, let's say senior directors. Um, and then they want to uh, apply for uh, and, and get a VP roles. And so that's a different skill set. That's more of the soft skills, emotional intelligence, uh, people management. So I'm helping more and more uh, people uh, prepare for those types of interviews in terms of soft skills, people management, um, and emotional intelligence, how you perceive other people's emotions and how you communicate well with others. So that's more the work I'm doing recently. Great. I know 
our listeners can learn more about you and, and your services by visiting your website, and that's elncoaching.com. We'll be sure to include that in the show notes and the website article as well. Uh, now, Ryan, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how to answer any interview question? I, I really think that uh, being of service is number is really number one. Is is being going in with a be of service attitude, and then also have this vision. You know, think about yourself. In, you've seen in conferences where there's a person on stage, they're being interviewed by a moderator, they're having a big vision uh, of how they run their company and how they how they manage their people and how they work uh, with their people. So think a little bit more of the big picture uh, about how you would contribute to the company, and that will help you with your with your uh, interviewing uh, behavioral interviewing questions and answers. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash show notes. Again, that's maxlist.org slash show notes. Next week, our guest will be Markel Morris. She's a career counselor and the founder of Futures in Motion. Markel helps her clients take charge of their careers navigate the job market, and reach goals with confidence. She says there is one basic error that applicants make again and again. Avoid it and your job search becomes easier, shorter, and more rewarding. Join us next Wednesday when Markel Morris and I talk about the biggest mistake job seekers make and what to do instead. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan Thornton Huff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislinberry Anderson manages our social media posts. Our sound engineer is Will Watts. Ryan Morrison at Podfly Productions edits the show. Don Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week. <laughs>